I do not care if every single tweet in support of Johnny Depp for the last five years has come from the personal computer of Mohammed bin Salman. I, I don't care if it was all Mohammed bin Salman. I'm not even saying maybe he didn't hire people. Maybe he's just, he is just afflicted with this Johnny Depp bromance so powerfully that he himself now just basically spends all his time tweeting for Johnny Depp. So I'm gonna to try to get this all in one take because I am tired. But this new hit job podcast aimed at Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp supporters, it's coming out uh, tonight, tomorrow. Um, and I see where people are already dissecting this thing. And it turns out that one of the main sources uh, for this podcast is someone who herself was trying to create bots for Amber Heard. I mean, <laughs> you have to be a real dumbass, Alexi Mostros, to center your argument around a bot creating uh, Amber Heard supporter. So that's interesting, particularly since it seems like the main thrust of your argument, Alexi Mostros, is going to be that Johnny Depp's support online was at least 50% artificial. That is 50% due to bots generated by, wait for it, Mohammed bin Salman. That is the level of idiocy that we are at. But look, I don't even want to delve into whether or not Johnny Depp had his team, had bots, or didn't have bots. Yes, of course, I think it's bullshit. I've seen behind the scenes in some of these different situations now, and I've seen that bots do not play the huge role that people think they do. And they just don't. It's bullshit. It was bullshit when people were trying to say that Trump was elected in 2016 because of bots. No, he wasn't. He was elected because he, <laughs> because the Democrats were stupid enough to run one of the most perplexingly unlikable people, Hillary Clinton, who, by the way, apparently is also in some nebulous way associated with Adam Waldman. So maybe she was the one supplying the bots for Johnny Depp. <laughs> I mean, that's just as plausible as this BS that they're trying to promote about Mohammed bin Salman. But let me just cut to the chase, all right? Because I'm tired. Let me just cut to the chase. No, I don't believe that all of the support or even a significant portion of the support for Johnny Depp was artificial or was bots. And no, I don't believe this BS story that they're floating about Mohammed bin Salman. But let me just get to the chase, cut to the chase. I do not care if every single tweet in support of Johnny Depp for the last five years has come from the personal computer of Mohammed bin Salman. I don't care. I don't care if it was all Mohammed bin Salman. I'm not even saying maybe he didn't hire people. Maybe he's just, he is just afflicted with this Johnny Depp bromance so powerfully that he himself now just basically spends all his time tweeting for Johnny Depp. I mean, to me, that's just as plausible as what they're trying to say. And I mean, who could really blame Mohammed bin Salman if he's in love with Johnny Depp? Isn't everyone in love with Johnny Depp? Anyway, so I don't care if every single pro Depp tweet that's come out in the last five years came from the desk of Mohammed bin Salman. And do you know why I do not care? Because none of that in any way, one iota, changes the information, objective information that we have learned about this situation, about this Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp situation over the past several years. Mohammed bin Salman, as far as I know, did not get a, an actress with a voice similar to Amber Heard and an actor with a voice similar to Johnny Depp to record audios that were then disseminated by Adam Waldman all over the place. The audios, of course, that we have heard where Amber Heard says, oh, I wasn't, Johnny, I wasn't, I wasn't punching you. I was hitting you. And Johnny Depp is pleading, if there's going to be violence, if, if things are going to get heated, I, I, we need to separate. We need to separate. That's why I get away. That's why I run away. No, Johnny, no. I mean, we all heard those audios. So are you telling me that Mohammed bin Salman generated those audios, that those are fakes, that those are like deep fakes produced by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Because that would be interesting, Alexi Mostros. I might, act, I might be interested in that. 
But you telling me that what, 50% of all online activity in terms of supportive tweets and and tweet and, and angry tweets targeting Amber Heard and so forth, you're telling me that 50% of that was generated by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? I'd say, I don't give a shit. I just don't give a shit. And I'm not saying that to endorse the theory. I actually think the theory is bullshit, just like all of you, for all of the reasons why a number of you tonight and for the past several days have been posting, have been debunking these claims. I totally agree. I think it's BS, but I'm just saying I don't give a shit anyway because it doesn't change the fundamentals of this situation as it's unfolded over the last several years. Since Amber Heard did her famous, you know, perp walk (laughs) in retrospect, but her famous uh, abused woman act in front of the paparazzi in what? Was that 2015, 2016, whatever. I'm already like trying to forget. I'm trying to repress the memory of all that. So I don't care. Mohammed bin Salman was not responsible for that devastating audio. Where it's very clear, as we've said again and again and again, who the victim was in that relationship and who the perpetrator was in that relationship. Also, did Mohammed bin Salman, did he generate a deep fake of Amber Heard's sister, Whitney Heard, showing off the bruises all over her on camera that, that she said that she indicated Amber inflicted on her. I, I'd forgotten about that too. I was just going through tonight because I wanted to prep a little bit for this presentation. I was going through reviewing the trial and reviewing the, the case, the situation, because honestly, I was already starting to forget aspects of it. And I came across once again, uh, something that I had posted Amber Heard's sister, remember she was filming a pilot for a reality TV show because she wanted to be, I guess, the star as well. And so she was trying to, she was trying to get into reality TV and she was on a pilot for a reality TV show and she showed up with all of these bruises that you could even see on the camera, all of these bruises on her neck and stuff. And the women around her saying, oh, Amber beat her up. And they're talking to Whitney and, 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 and saying, yeah, and you shouldn't let her beat you like that. And Whitney's just kind of like, oh. I just think Whitney's like a sad Eeyore in that relationship. But whatever. Whatever. It's, very, it's a very sick, codependent relationship between Whitney and Amber. But, but what have you. Did Mohammed bin Salman, did he make that? Is that some deep fake too that he generated with, you know, all of his oil money in Saudi Arabia? Like what? Because he's so under Johnny Depp's spell? Did Mohammed bin Salman pay off all of Johnny Depp's exes to stand up for him? Is Vanessa Paradis on the Mohammed bin Salman payroll? Really? Really? Is Kate Moss on the Mohammed bin Salman payroll or all these people who say all these nice things about Johnny and all of these horrible things about Amber Heard? Are they on Mohammed bin Salman's payroll? Is Elon Musk on Mohammed bin Salman's payroll? Because apparently, apparently Elon Musk was telling all these people around him, including people in his family, including his, his brother, was telling them what a nightmare Amber Heard was. Toxic, toxic, unbelievably toxic. What was it that Elon Musk's brother was quoted in that official biography by Walter Isaacson as saying about Amber Heard? A tornado of destruction or whatever? I don't remember. But come on. Did uh, did Mohammed bin Salman, did he engineer Amber Heard's arrest in a, what was it, Seattle airport, in a Washington airport for domestic violence when she was beating up her wife at the time? Did Mohammed bin Salman engineer that event? Is is Tasha Van Rie on the Mohammed bin Salman payroll? Because damn, I'm starting to get a lot of respect for Mohammed bin Salman if his tendrils extend this deep into American society and Hollywood. It's damn impressive. He's been he has been hard at work for Johnny Depp. Mohammed bin Salman has. Do you even know all of these details of this case, Alexi Mostros? You know, I have serious doubts as to whether a a number of these journalists who are Amber Heard friendly and anti-Johnny Depp, as to whether they even have paid that close attention to the case. I mean, they've been exposed as not having paid close attention to the case. And so it's really a kind of a projection there. You know, when Alexi Mostros 
says that it was public perception expressed online in tweets and TikTok and on social media that affected the jury's verdict in Virginia. And that's one of the main claims being promoted. Make, make, make no mistake. That's one of the main claims. It's, it's in writing. In, uh, it's in writing on Tortoise's website. What's the point of this? And they did a little write-up and they put it out. Um, and in statements Alexei Mostros has made. They believe, Alexei Mostros and his people, they believe that Amber Heard would not have gotten the unfavorable verdict that she received in Virginia if those dang stupid, you know, Hicksville jurors, I guess, in Virginia, if they hadn't been so swayed by what was going on on social media and all of the apparent bot activity by Mohammed bin Salman. That's their premise. That's their bullshit premise. And to come to that premise, to come to that point of view, that perspective, these people like, like Alexei Mostros, they have to have looked at all of this evidence that we've all looked at and listened to those audios that we've listened to like a thousand times and all of this other stuff. They have to have looked at that and then they came to the conclusion that Amber Heard was the victim in that? That the, that the Virginia jury got that verdict wrong? Really? I just don't see how that's possible. I have serious doubts as to whether these people have even paid attention. But, you know, the truth about this is that uh, this podcast, it, it may get a bit of attention for a week or two. It'll get some headlines. But it's boring. It's a boring premise. It's stupid. All you have to do is listen to that promo that they put out to see how ridiculous this is. They have a spy, someone purporting to be a former spy, like spy, like CIA, talking about how when one day they woke up and they saw all of this Johnny Depp, pro Johnny Depp content on their feed during the Depp Heard trial, and they assumed that it had to be some kind of nefarious interference such as you would see in a black ops or something. Give me a break. I mean, I even satirized it. I'll tack it on to the end of this video for those of you who haven't seen it. It's ridiculous. Come on. I refuse to take this stuff seriously. So I appreciate those of you who are out there debunking this bullshit and taking the time to take this seriously and to really dig into it and to expose the, the ridiculous characters behind this and these ridiculous characters and people who, have, who are being used as sources in this podcast, you know, people with just ridiculous or questionable credentials. One of the main sources was just a, a postdoc at a university. Okay, I see. So we're talking to we're talking to barely employed PhDs sources. I don't know. It just seems kind of strange. Um, but yeah, I appreciate those of you who are going into it and debunking it. It's great. I just refuse the entire premise because I think that the whole thing is so laughable and so ridiculous. And because at the end of the day, I don't think that even if 100% of the tweets that were pro-Johnny Depp and anti-Amber Heard were from Mohammed bin Salman's personal computer, at the end of the day, I still don't think it makes any difference. But you understand where the media are coming from and why we're seeing these hit jobs proliferating. It's because of two things, and I've talked about this before. The first thing is that they're upset because they were late to the party. They got preempted by a bunch of what they see as idiot YouTubers and social media characters. So they got preempted. It was the trial, the celebrity trial of perhaps the century, the celebrity story, Depp versus Heard, of perhaps the entire century, and the mainstream media completely didn't miss it, uh, completely missed it. It was on the horizon there for years. And YouTubers were getting hip to it and talking about it. And people on social media. The media was just, oh, well, just not looking. And then all of a sudden this thing comes along and it happens and it becomes huge. And you see all of these different, for a while, so all of these different YouTube accounts blowing up or doing well. And the media feels like that should have been theirs. And they're pissed. They're pissed that they relate to the party and they're pissed that they were preempted. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is... In retrospect, now they have come to see how detrimental this Amber Heard, Johnny Depp situation has been to Me Too and to the notion of believe women and believe all women and how much it has, how much of a concern it has instilled among a number of people that maybe Amber Heard wasn't the only false accuser, that maybe there are a lot of false accusations. 
And so that was really a one-two punch to the media and they've not recovered. And so they're still like, some of them are licking their wounds, but some of them are getting out there and they're trying to put out counter propaganda. So if anyone is doing any kind of weird like CIA shit or whatever, it kind of seems like it's the media engaging in their own nefarious counter propaganda. So anyway, that's what I think. But I don't take this seriously. I don't think anyone else is going to take it seriously. It'll generate some really annoying headlines over the next several days, several weeks, and I'll be happy to cover it. <laughs> it's interesting, it's, I guess. But it's getting a little tiresome, and it's getting, it's getting a little boring, too. And I just, I wonder if this is going to make the splash that Alexei Mostros is hoping it's going to make. So... Uh, I wanted to give an update on my channel, so it was a lot of fun to go on Tim Pool's program, and it's definitely the biggest thing that I have ever done, so check that out if you haven't already. It is that time of year, I try to do this twice a year, where I remind people that um, I have to pay the bills as well. And those of you who don't watch me very often, you know, it's one thing. I don't, I'm not asking you for donations. But those of you who watch a lot and don't give, I really would appreciate a tip. I use PayPal. Uh, you can always uh, do the YouTube thanks button as well, although PayPal takes less of your money. I'm not encouraging people to go to my Patreon right now because I'm just, I'm working a, a job, a full-time waitressing job. And I just have not had the time that I would like to put into Patreon content. And the people who are with me there are just kind of hanging on to be nice, quite frankly. And I'm going to try to rectify that. But a lot going on. And so, you know, the thing with this YouTube thing is that until you really break out, it really is kind of just a day-by-day -day struggle. And so, you know, my compromise is to waitress, which I actually like. And I think it's a, most of the time, it's kind of a fun job. But at the same time, um, I really, it really is helpful when people give. And what I say to everybody is, you know, think about what you would spend on some of you on a latte or something kind of worthless like that and send a little bit of that my way if you can. And I don't want, you know, my regulars to be giving more money because I do have several people who are great and have been supporting me uh, in, a, in some really strong ways. And I want to recognize them. I'm not going to say your last name, don't worry. But uh, JD, uh, the, two, uh, the two Lisas, you know who you are, um, AJ, uh, Paul, and a number of others I'll be bringing up. Um, I'm going to start recognizing um, my donors and my patrons by their first name. Uh, more often in my uh, podcast and my YouTube videos. But, you know, I just want to remind you that I'm giving my all to this, but that just because you're seeing me, you know, on Tim Pool or something like that, that doesn't mean that anyone's paying my bills because they're not. And it doesn't mean I'm getting much money because actually YouTube, it has changed some policies to make it more difficult to make money on YouTube. And uh, I really don't get much revenue from YouTube, hardly at all, like nothing <laughs> these days. So if you can give, that's great. The links are below. If not, that's fine too. And as always, you know, the best thing you can do for me is to continue to watch and to share my stuff and like and subscribe and all of that. So everybody, I'm going to go out on a final note here with something funny. If you haven't seen it before, it's Pop Culture Crisis reacting to my spy parody. I was doing a parody of the spy that we uh, hear in the promo for this podcast that I was talking about. And so anyway, apparently they loved it. It really cracked them up. So you can watch that uh, and I think you'll get a kick out of it. Bye, everybody. Anyway, I was taking a break one day from my spycraft, <laughs> and I was uh, just scrolling through Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and YouTube, and all of a sudden I was inundated I love the with sunglasses. all of this pro-Johnny Depp <laughs> propaganda, all of these pro-Johnny Depp social media, and I hadn't even been keeping up with the situation. I didn't even know that there was going to be a trial. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly out of nowhere, I'm just inundated with all of these pro dep social media posts. And so at that point, I'm thinking, what is going on here? And my spy sensibilities were suddenly aroused by the strangeness of this situation. My and spy I thought, senses this were tingling. Feels very, very familiar to me. Oh, yes, this is what we tried to do in Nicaragua. <laughs> in the and it didn't work out. We ended up, you know, some, some people ended up uh, being called before Congress. But anyway, 
And so it seemed like a black op. That's what it seemed to, to someone to a seasoned CIA operative like myself. It seemed like a black op. And I thought, this is not normal. This is not <laughs> organic. This has all the traces of a complex system, di misinformation <laughs> system at work here. And so I promptly <laughs> contacted, you know, through my CIA connection, <laughs> very easy to do. I promptly contacted Elaine Bredehoft. <laughs> this was during the trial, and I said, Elaine, you probably have no concept of the larger forces How is she at work a straight face? here. It's impressive. <laughs> but what you and the dear Miss Heard are facing is not normal. It's not organic. Do you think she like went through all her sunglasses? She's like, what speaks spy? What simply says spy? Definitely says spy. And, and so I offered my services at that point. Said, you know, being a seasoned spy, CIA operative like I am, I uh, perhaps I can help you identify who is at the root of all of this social media and this information and these bots and everything it can't just be it can't just be reasonable people that you know have seen the evidence and heard the audio and everything and come to reasonable conclusions no no there's something far more insidious <laughs> and so elaine took me up on it and i conducted an extensive review and I used all of my, all of the tools of my spy craft that I had honed <laughs> over many, many years. And I determined that actually what was going on is that someone on Johnny Depp's team was doing all of this, was responsible for all of it. And moreover, that Johnny Depp probably only has maybe one to 200 actual human followers and the rest are just bots. <laughs>